Duke's up, ready to fight. This is going to be a great target. So I've got, I can still maintain a good distance, but I've got a big target that I can aim at. Can you break his arm that way? Definitely. Absolutely. Especially with a steel one, right? Oh, yeah. Time to talk batons in the Nut and Fancy Project. OJ! Greetings and salutations. This is Officer Jared in the Nut and Fancy Project. He's been out with us several times helping us test the gear, running and gunning, trench warfare. Good times, huh? Good times, yeah. Let's yeah. I think I told you early on that Officer Jared is an international combative arts instructor. That's not made up, by the way. In fact, you just got back from Philippines, Philippines right? And you go to Germany in a day or so, right? Tomorrow morning, yep. Yeah. And what do you do when you're over there? Uh, I teach um, combatants um, in various forms um, to uh, police, and military organizations, and sometimes to some civilian martial arts schools and clubs. So it's your full-time job to teach officers how to kick butt. Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we ran into this, the camlock baton. Last year, we're going to break that out in a separate video. That's not really what this video is about. This one's going to be about uh, maybe a tactic that sure. if you are a baton advocate, which I am, hello world, TM Peers, this is nothing fancy narrating. I'm a huge baton advocate. I think if used properly, it's a great defensive, maybe offensive tool. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is an expert in the use of batons right here. Uh, a few ground rules though. If you disagree with the technique shown, that's fine. Be respectful. Don't sound off and make it, you know, your own soapbox in the comments below, okay? So sometimes, I don't know, in the martial arts community, <laughs> you know, guys There's think a, their technique is the only technique yeah, to be used. My kung fu is better than yours, kind of. My kung fu is better than yours. Yeah. You suck. I don't want to see that in the nothing fancy videos. You guys, you guys go to the forums if you want to do that. Not tolerated here. Disagreement's okay. Make it respectful. Be cool with each other. Okay, I think you'll be impressed with Jared's uh, capabilities. Um, what we're going to do here is break out a technique, right? Yep. And we're going to probably do a couple videos of these, of things that you can do as a baton user. There's my ugly face. Um, you know, to use it more effectively. Jared, you were talking about your approach to instructing when you talk to officers, the fancy crap versus what you call the fundamentals. Right. Talk to that right. real quick. Yeah, you know, um, the, the reality of, of practical application of a baton for self-defense um, it has to be um, simple. Uh, fundamentals win fights. Um, you know, we, I can teach a bunch of fancy techniques that uh, uh, take a lot of time and a lot of co a complex motor skill. But in the reality of the situation, um, in my experience, and uh, as a police officer and, and those that I've worked with and those that I've talked with around the world, um, those fancy techniques act, aren't used. Um, it's, it's if you don't know how to hit hard, hit accurate, hit with speed. Um, then um, nothing else was really that important. Um, everything is secondary. So um, my philosophy is learn to move, footwork, so that you can um, avoid getting hit and so that you can put yourself in a position to acquire targets and also learn to hit hard and accurately with your baton. And that's what counts. Okay, we're gonna demo that here in this video. Two things you said that are interesting, I really wanna break them out, is one, that your training is grounded in reality. You don't operate in a vacuum, you're not just reading a magazine and say, hey, this looks fancy, it looks cool, it impresses people. You're constantly talking, and you and I off camera said this, talking to officers saying, hey, have you ever employed this technique? Correct. All over the world, not right. just here in the US. Correct. And generally they're saying, hey, it's great in training, but uh, no, no, never I, use that. I, I, personally, I save a lot of the fancy techniques for like a, more of a civilian martial arts seminar. Yeah, and like it has a place stuff. in that it environment. Does does, but um, for, as far as training um, officers and, and soldiers that may not necessarily be martial artists, they're, they're there to learn what's going to help me right you now win, win a fight, um, and they don't take the time that some uh, martial artists might every week to train in, in these types of tools, then um, fundamentals are really 90% um, really of the game, and that, that's what we focus on, is um, me being able to move and hit. And something I say in my tabletops all the time, when you're talking to any martial art, uh, and you just said it, it takes a lot of time. It does. A dedication to practice for it. So if you get to those upper levels, maybe the chokes, submissions, some other things you can do with the baton, which are quite effective yes. if you are good enough to employ them. It takes training. Yeah, it, takes it takes training. training. Yeah. You're going to have to dedicate a fair portion of your life to practice with that. The more complex the, the motor skill, the more training it's going to take to be able to pull that out under the stress of a, of a combative situation and, and actually use. Definitely. Okay, and the uh, second point I want to bring out, you already said it, is you're equally balanced. Do you believe in the offense and also the movement to make you less of a target? Is that, did I catch that right? Yeah, my, my, my primary- Footwork is how you said it. Footwork, my primary philosophy is, is a counter offense. Um, I, I don't believe in having a, a defensive mindset because you can't win a fight with defense. You can protect yourself for so long, but at one, some point you're gonna have to take the offensive to win that fight. 
Um, and so I believe in, in a counteroffensive philosophy and utilizing your footwork uh, counteroffensively. If that means for some reason you had to move back uh, in the fight uh, tactically, then that could be a, a sound a tactic, but you may have to re-engage. So at some point there's going to have to be some forward movement. If there's an option to disengage, I'm always a huge advocate of, of uh, tactically disengaging the fight. I don't like to say retreating or running away. Tactically. I'll say run away. Well, I, I, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, my yeah. primary <laughs> option usually as a civilian. Right. As, I mean, you're, you're talking, there's a lot of different levels we're talking here. We're talking civilian who's authorized maybe to carry or it's legal to carry a baton and also you're blending into the law enforcement arena right. too so I, switch gears with us folks we're not just talking about one audience right here. and for civilian and, I, and, and when i train civilians i teach the exact same thing if, if, there's, if the option is there to disengage that should be one of your number one primary Thank options you. to look for um, tactically disengaging though sometimes if, if just like in a close quarter ambush if you if you run away from that ambush then you put yourself in a more vulnerable position sometimes you have to fight through that ambush but if the op option is there to run away like uh, or uh, tactically disengage you know he who fights and runs away lives to fight another day roger that okay so we're going to do a couple drills demonstrating what we've just talked about a little bit you demonstrating it Probably best done with a sparring partner. Yep, definitely. We could do some fancy dancey drills, uh, you know, single person, but uh, you get more realistic, I'm thinking, with a, a partner, right? Exactly, exactly, yep. Waiting patiently off on the side, student of Officer Jared's for uh, coming up almost on a decade, yep, right? Definitely, yep. It's a U.S. Army dude and a full time police officer. Correct. Meet Alan. What's up? Thanks for coming out. I'm happy to be here. This is Alan. He's assigned to uh, a Reserve Special Forces unit. I You're am. an armor for that unit, is that correct? That's right. Okay, cool. And on leave from Iraq. Yeah, home for the birth of my child. Be gone in a couple days. Wow, talk about uh, dedication. Thank you for your service. Uh, I appreciate it. It's a big sacrifice. Here he has a newborn child, and he's going to leave that child to go back to serve the United States of America as a soldier. Yeah. And when he's home, he's serving it as another sheepdog, a law <laughs> enforcement officer. And you are a full-time police officer, correct? I am. Uh, Salt Lake PD? Yep. Right on, brother. Well, thanks for coming out. You're the sparring partner. You and Jared have worked together a long time, yes. right? Yes. So yeah. we're, I think on this video, we'll demonstrate what you just talked about. Okay. The yeah. fundamentals of the primary and secondary strike. Does that sound cool? I think that's what's most important. We can come out with some fancy techniques, but you know, um, I'm a big believer of practical application, and the first thing that anyone needs to learn is learn how to move and learn how to, how to hit. Okay. Okay, so uh, by the way, what he's working there is the cam lock baton. Look in separate video. I'll do a tabletop review of it. We're going to see more of that video in action. OJ, uh, of course, he's a participant in the design and manufacture of this, so he's a huge proponent. I am a an unbiased gear reviewer, you know that. I'll tell you the advantages and disadvantages as I see it, not that it means that much on the cam lock. I'll tell you that thing is a freaking tank. It is a tank, and like you've said, it won't bend under really hard use, like you've seen with some other brands. Correct, yeah, absolutely. Okay, we'll talk more about specifics, but the reason I'm, I want to show you is this is uh, the actual cam lock. What size is that, 26? 26 inch, this okay. is the longer one. The, um, the, uh, uh, the 21 inch is the more popular model. That's um, what I usually carry yep. in the ASP. Yeah, but this is the this is the 26 incher. Okay, and then what do you have in this hand? And this is a, an exact replica made for made for training. It's it's uh, made from a lighter material. So you, uh, if there's drills that you do, uh, if you're getting more sophisticated with your drills and doing takedowns and whatnot, um, you can use something that's not going to injure your partner. Um, but as far as the bulk of your training, I do recommend training with your actual baton so you can get used to the, the weight and the balance of, of what you're actually The using. momentum's going to be completely different then, Correct. isn't it? Yeah. Okay, are you going to actually secretly switch out the real one? Um, uh, not at all. For Alan here and just <laughs> wail on the bag when he's not looking like that? Uh, ah. yeah, maybe, we'll see. <laughs> it's funny, I was asking OJ, I said, uh, hey, you know, do you, how about we can use that you know, training baton, right, uh, against these pads right here. He's like, oh, I've got to be careful because even with, even with a training baton, I'll rip right through the pad. Is that true? Yeah. If it's not made for batons, if, it's, if, the, if the pad's not an actual baton pad, it'll, it'll shred work. it. Yeah. All right. Okay, here we go. Uh, primary, secondary strike. These are the fundamentals of baton use, according to Officer Jared. Correct. You're yeah. up, bro. All right, so um, essentially, um, uh, as far as posture is concerned with, with the baton, um, I'm not a, a huge advocate of, of, of uh, a, start, a static stance because you've got to be mobile. Because the reality is fights are not static. You're not going to have a, 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 an opponent standing stationary and you standing stationary and hitting him while he be, he's a good bad guy for you. 
Okay, you've, um, the, the reality is there's going to be movement involved. And so if you're not training how to move and hit, then you're training yourself to fail essentially because that's not how the fight's going to look. So um, essentially um, I, what I like to do is um, divide footwork and mobility and actual uh, weapon manipulation and then combine them back together. Because if you try and throw them both at someone and they haven't done it before, it can be a little, little much. So you work on one fundamental, get that down, progress to mobility. Exactly. Okay, and yeah. I restate this because there's a lot of people who watch the video that, I'm sorry, they just won't absorb it. That's gonna be your, so. that's gonna be your primary training, training uh, methodology is exactly. Isolate okay. and then combine um, so you can build that, uh, the ability to move without thinking about the movement. Because if you're thinking about what the hands and the feet are doing, it's gonna be too much. You need to be able to be yeah. comfortable enough that you can just move and worry about um, t target acquisition and, and not thinking about what am I doing here. Um, and that's kind of getting to that muscle memory, okay. bypassing the whole UDA cycle. So are you going to show the strikes first off and then add in footwork? Yes. Okay. Okay. So uh, for our strike techniques, um, I like to bring the weapon up to the shoulder loader position. Um, this position here keeps my, in a, I'm a, it's a defense, just like a boxer. A boxer's going to have their hands up and up down. And with this here, I'm in a position where I can deliver my strongest strike, my number one angle, but I've also got my hand in a protected position so if things get close and ugly, I've got the ability to protect myself. Okay. So my hands are high, and from this position, my two primary strikes are going to be, and this is a very common philosophy, is going to be my triangular or X type uh, motion. Yeah. We, we, we would generally call a number one angle and a number two angle. Number one angle coming from my dominant side, coming straight down into the, into the, uh, into the uh, target. Coming down here, and my number two angle would come over from my left shoulder or, or support side shoulder, um, where I'm coming down into the bag more into this angle. Coming right through here, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay. So those are going to be my nice. primary angles. How hard is that to defend against, just that, um, if you're against a guy that does not have a baton? The only way to really defend against an attack of that nature is to get out or get in. Um, you got to get out of range because there's no way you can block that and not get hurt with your, with your body. Yeah, I mean, if you've got someone who's got power in, in his practice, like you said, and you said that off camera, how important it is to have a lot of power in those hits, like you just had. It's power, speed, precision. Um, Being able to hit with your target. Timing. Because I can have all the power and speed in the world, but if I can't hit what I'm trying to hit, it doesn't count for anything. So I've got to have that timing and precision also. So no, definitely. Kind of like shooting a gun. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's, um, it's uh, uh, you know, you can't miss fast enough to win. That's so, correct. So hmm. um, let's talk about that. Yeah. Okay, so you're talking about defending against it. So he's either got to get out of range or he's going to close and close grapple. It. Exactly. Close and, it. and like wrap you up with a baton or try to take it from you. Precisely. Because all the power for this baton is in this last, you know, six inches here. Um, the, the, cl the closer you get into my shoulder, the less power is involved. So if you're able to get inside and es effectively jam that attack or wait till I've gone past, move out and then get in and jam at this side, yeah. then that's, that's how you're going to be able to defend the, the baton. So you've got to get out, just like a, the, the whole hurricane philosophy. You're either, you're either in the middle or you're outside, yeah. but there's a whole danger zone that you want to avoid. Nice. Okay, so that's a strike. Uh, any tips on when they practice that strike? Um, yeah. uh, a defensive tactics bag or what? Uh, that's well, what I do, but I'm not practicing my movement when I do well, that. Number one, make sure you're, you're hitting, hitting, hitting um, correct meaning. Um, you want to hit, this is what we call the secondary knuckles, and you want to make sure that the strike surface is above that. If I'm hitting like a tennis racket, there's a lot more chance that that's going to pop out of the hand. Um, or if I'm hitting like a backhand tennis racket strike, I'm hitting against the weak part of my grip. So you always want to turn so that all that energy is going towards the web of the hand. So that's the first thing is when I'm doing a one, strike here, number two, strike here. It's almost as if I was using a blade. If I was yeah. using a knife, I'd have to do the same thing, otherwise I'd be slapping with the side of that blade. So the philosophy actually transfers over to my knife fighting. Um, additionally, um, as far as training tools, um, you know, some of the simplest tools are some of the best. One, one of my favorite training um, tools is very cheap, is a stack of tires. You put a post in the ground, stack tires on it, and then hit rub the, 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 um, the, hit the tires. If you, don't, if you don't have the space or the room to, do, to put a whole stack of tires, you can hang one tire from a tree, and that movement is going to force you to have a little bit more precision on a moving target, and practice hitting the tire um, as it's moving, a uh, one hanging tire. Nice. And um, those are the, not. And when you do it, don't just stand there and hit, because that's good. You know, you may, maybe do that to warm up and start off with, but then you start moving and st staying out of range and then stepping in and hit. Because in the reality of a fight, I don't want to stand here and trade, especially if I'm targeting large muscle groups like the legs. If you threw a punch at me, 
it's the same distance, even though I have a baton. If I was, if he had his hand up, okay, then I could stay a little bit more distance and stay out of reach of his, his arm. But if I'm not targeting areas like the legs, a large, large target, I'm in punch range. So um, I want to make sure that I'm, uh, I don't want to stand here and trade blows, but I want to practice staying out of range because my advantage now is my reach. So I want to stay out of range and then have the ability to move in, engage, and then stay engaged or disengage and look for another opportunity to strike again. So I want to be able to stay out and then look for the opportunity to move in and get in and then protect myself the whole time. Because remember, he's not going to be a standing there. He's going to be trying. There's a good chance that the reason I'm hitting him is because he's trying to hurt me. And so um, I need to be defensive at the same time I'm, I'm, I'm facilitating my offense. Okay, so you're going into the second part, the mobility then. Mobility, exactly. Okay. They all go hand in hand. Okay, now fancy foot drills will be forgotten. They just will. By uh, guys, how about breaking it down? So you talked about the, in, the importance of the strike. Yes. And then we're talking about foot footwork. Yes. Uh, what is simple? Something that they can take okay. away and use. Okay, so and the idea of the footwork is to train so that it will be forgotten. You want to be able to train it to forget it, and yeah. so that's just happening. Um, but essentially, one of the fundamental footworks that you can utilize is, is a simple, we call a shuffling motion. And the key to shuffling, uh, shuffling motions is going to be an open-close motion, meaning, I, first of all, I don't want to stand with my feet narrow, I don't have no balance here. I don't want to be too wide, I have no mobility. So I want to be in about 45 degree position, if I'm facing this way, about a 45 degree position. If this foot starts coming back, and that takes my weapon side away, and now I've got more distance to strike what I'm trying to hit. So I need to bring this leg up, okay, 45 degree position, and the reason why I don't have this weapon in front, if I was fighting weapon versus weapon, or like knife, knife fighting, then I, I, I actually will put my weapon side forward. But if I'm weapon versus non-weapon, then his best defense is gonna to be to grab this, so I'm using this side to protect it. At the same time, if I'm a law enforcement officer, I need to be able to protect my weapon. Right. So from here, from this position, a shuffle footwork would be shuffle in, and all I'm doing is an open-close motion. Open-close, open-close. You want to start it fairly static, and then you want to be able to move quickly. Open-close, open-close. And so the open and close with the feet, I can do lateral motions, open-close, so I'm zoning, pivot, okay? Open-close, pivot. Okay, so stepping and pivoting. So that, and that pivoting helps you get offline. So open close to change distance forward, open close, move back sideways and sideways. Okay, so you're achieving maximum stability with that stance at all times. Yes, and, the, and, the, and this footwork is for making subtle changes in proximity um, to the opponent. For big changes, I wouldn't, if the guy I was fighting was across the room, I wouldn't shuffle across the room like that. So this is Common for subtle sense, yeah. obviously. Yeah. So this is for making subtle changes and distance and proximity. Okay, let's do this maybe. Alan, if you can put your bag back on. Okay, what we're gonna have Alan do is give him two strikes, yep. a primary, secondary, or the X, and then I'm gonna have him close to take your weapon away and show how you would, uh, the importance of maybe, I don't know, not walking backwards. Okay, okay, so I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll show first of all the, the bad, what, what would happen if I walk back. Okay. Okay, so Sounds good. And, so and we're going to just say right. Alan's a really committed bad guy. Okay, baton or no baton, he's going to get you. So let's say he takes two hits and miraculously and he can keep going. Yeah. We'll simulate that. That's realistic. Okay. Okay, so two strikes. Ready? Okay. okay. So we'll come over here so we have more real estate for you. Okay. Okay, that was not, don't walk backwards. Exactly. And actually, it would be worse because what happened is you'd probably fall over and he'd be on top of you, right? Precisely. Okay. Good. We had that obstacle in the way. Nice. Elements you want to convey in that. Yeah, just, and that was, there's, there's other ways to move also, but that was just uh, illustrating what we talked about. A simple side shuffle and a pivoting motion. Um, again, it's a, uh, I've seen several martial arts that will use a similar footwork. They call it getting off the railroad tracks, opening the door, I step and I pivot. Um, and it gets me offline of the attack. Yeah, what I'm seeing is you're just getting off axis with his line of motion. 
So if he's coming like this, you're going to move to one of the sides. Exactly. And so you're always, you're not walking backwards. You're just getting out of his plane of motion. Yes. Nice. And he, how was that, Alan? Was it easy to track him with him doing it? No, absolutely not. <laughs> it's tough because you have to change your whole, and you have momentum too, right? Exactly. So you're, you're moving and, oh crap, now he's on the left and your momentum's kind of working against you then. That's the idea. And right on. One thing to keep in mind too is as you move, you still want to be delivering strikes. Obviously, I like if, it. Your, 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 if your partner's got a bag and it's on the other side of the body, you don't want to you know, deliver strikes. To, to, to the actual, you know, your training partner. But right. in application, as you move, you want to be delivering strikes at the same time. Um, now, again, you, like you just mentioned, that's kind of your target in this drill. But in reality, would you, what other th areas would um, you have targeted? So uh, let's drop the pad and in yeah. slow motion show what, what you would have done. Because okay. Definitely, yeah, this is very kind of artificial, what yeah, we did. Yeah, and, and the target areas are going to be determined by the level of threat that you perceive. Let's go completely non-lethal. Okay. So Maybe I should say less lethal. Right. Freaking people. <laughs> so, yeah, semantics. But basically, yeah. yes, um, the, the areas you want to target primarily in a non-lethal situation are going to be the large muscle groups. Uh, reason for that, less propensity for injury, but yeah. also large targets are easier to hit. Yeah. Um, so um, some, of the, some of my primary targets are going to be center mass of the arm right here. If he's putting his jukes up, ready to fight. This is going to be a great target because I've got I can still maintain a good distance, but I've got a big target that I can aim at right here. Can you break his arm that way? Definitely. Absolutely, especially with a steel one, right? Oh yeah, yeah, that's definitely. If you get a good get a good strike in there, you can definitely do some um, some damage to the bones. Okay. Um, if the arm was down, then I may be hitting here, okay, into the center mass of the tricep bicep area. Um, the thigh is always going to be a great area. Um, center mass of the thigh, center mass of the of the calf area. These are going to be great areas. Um, these are some of my larger target areas. It's going to affect his mobility. Problem with when you target low is you, is you do make yourself more vulnerable to his counterattacks. You're kind of leaning into him, aren't you? You are, because I have to hit down here, like I illustrated earlier. He's got, he's got, I'm going to be in the same distance. Now, if I was able to zone properly and get to here, then I'm further away from that. So that's going to make it a little safer for nice. me um, from this outside line. Um, so it's great target areas. Just be cognizant that you do become more vulnerable to a counterattack. Perfect. There's Alan, Officer Jared, with an introduction to some baton fundamentals with your style of teaching. Yep. Probably a lot of techniques out there, right? There's a lot. There's tons. I mean, the sky's the limit. Um, yeah. But fundamentals win fights, so those should be a focus, um, first and foremost. Right on. I totally agree with it. I mean, uh, the primary and secondary strike, very important. Yes. So my primary and secondary, we'll call it number one and two angle. Yeah. It's actually from the shoulder position. and. So practice that. Yep. Get that down. Get those down. Just work on your power, timing, precision, speed, accuracy. And then once you have that down. Once you have that down, then you want to work on mobility. Because um, if I'm going to be able to avoid his attacks and at the same time put myself in a, a safe position to acquire targets, I need to be able to move. Um, and the reality of fighting is chaotic movement. And so um, being dynamic with your right. footwork. Do you need a sparring partner for that, OJ? No, no. We can just, I'll just kind of show real quickly. Okay, cool. Um, basically, my, I want to be able to move in and out, side to side. The key is always open and close with the feet in, out, okay, side to side, and getting myself to a position where I can acquire target. Subtle, subtle changes in distance and proximity. Open and close is the key. If I close open, then at that, that moment in time, my feet are together, puts me in a vulnerable position balance wise. So right. I always want to open and close. And this is a very, if you've got anyone out there that's a boxer, you'll know, you'll, you'll recognize. Very familiar footwork to boxing also. I like how you're, you have that baton shoulder too yeah. in, in your uh, strike position and that you have your offhand ready for defensive purposes exactly. or secondary strike positions. Exactly. And my terminology may be different than yours, yeah, sorry. Definitely. No, yeah, checking, Love it. distracting. That was an excellent point you made on that. All right, baton fundamentals. Oh, one other thing, I'm gonna end the video with this. OJ's a pretty fit dude, right? Uh, I, I try my best for, for, for a long time. <laughs> Alan and OJ have been sparring off camera prior to this, and I will tell you, it, it's a fair amount of work. You're breathing hard after you've done some baton work. Yeah, true or false? Good, good workout. It's true. <laughs> yeah, so you might want to be a little bit in shape if you want to be a good baton fighter. Yeah, any, 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 my, my philosophy for, for, for self-preservation is fitness is part of it, yeah. whether it's just health-wise or ready for the fight. Yeah. 
Cool. I'll have to share my uh, my diet and workout plans with you sometime, OJ. <laughs> these this, yeah. these little things. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. OJ would dominate me, man. Are you kidding me? All right, that's Officer Jared. He is a uh, reserve SWAT officer, combative tactics extraordinaire instructor around the world, getting ready to go to Germany, teach the very things that you just saw on camera. I think it's pretty generous that you would put this on camera, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. You can thank OJ. Go to his page. You'll see an annotation there. Alan, thank you for coming out. Appreciate it. Thanks for your service. Stay safe there in Iraq. Congratulations on the new baby. And thank your wife for allowing you to come out and fight with us today and uh, show some uh, baton tactics. It might help some officers yes. and it might help some good civilians yes. uh, against uh, the bad people out there. This is nothing fancy. Alan, Officer Jared, signing off. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks.